Hi, this is Lalit Assist and you are watching Engineering Made Easy. In this video lecture, we will discuss the Quadrature Amplitude Modulation, QAM. We call it as QAM in short. Here we will see the basic concept of QAM, why it is called as a Quadrature Amplitude Modulation, block diagram of the QAM transmitter. We will see how each block works and also the QAM receiver's block diagram. Okay, These are various blocks we will see and also a little bit of mathematical analysis but before starting this topic let's see today's quiz so our question is in a communication system noise is most likely to affect the signal at which stage at the transmitter second option is at the receiving or the destination end in the information source or in the channel so if you know the answer of this question please uh, write your answer in the comments and we will ask such uh, simple questions in uh, every video lecture and you will have to write your answer in the comments so now let's come back to our topic quadrature amplitude modulation the basic concept we can use this quadrature amplitude modulation with uh, either analog signals or digital signals if uh, we use it with analog messages then uh, we have two analog message signals and they are amplitude modulator and we have two carrier waves so in qam technique if we use it with analog modulation then we use uh, amplitude modulation and with the digital bit streams if the message signal is in the form of digital bit streams or digital bit sequences then we use ASK modulation that is amplitude shift king modulation so why this is known as a quadrature amplitude modulation what is the meaning of quadrature here actually in quadrature amplitude modulation QAM the two carrier waves are out of phase by 90 degree that's why this scheme is known as quadrature amplitude modulation and these carriers are known as quadrature carriers let me show you this with the help of a block diagram look at this block diagram of the quadrature amplitude modulation transmitter here we have two message signals x1 t and x2 t these are the this is the case of analog okay these are the analog uh, messages and uh, we are using the product modulators two product modulars modulators you see here that uh, the output here is nothing but the amplitude modulated wave because here we are using this this product modulators inputs are message signal analog uh, message modulating signal and here we are supplying the carrier wave a cos omega ct this is the carrier wave and uh, these are the two inputs for this product modulator and in the output we will get am amplitude modulated wave because when uh, modulating signal and carrier waves are uh, applied to the product modulator then the output gives us the double sideband suppressed carrier dsbsc double sideband suppressed carrier output which is a form of uh, amplitude modulation and here also uh, look at this this product modulators two inputs are having the carrier wave and the modulating signal but here the difference is that here the carrier wave is first applied here and then it is phase shifted by 90 degrees so 90 degree phase shift uh, shift takes place in this 90 degree phase shifter and then the output is a sine omega ct when we phase shift the cos wave by 90 degree then then we get the sine wave so its inputs are the modulating signal another modulating signal x2t and the phase shifted carrier wave so the output is again the amplitude modulated wave now here you can see that uh, this is a combination of uh, if we talk about uh, analog kind of modulation then this qam quadrature amplitude modulation is a uh, combination of both uh, amplitude modulation and the phase modulation because phase shift is also there so if this is the case for amplitude uh, this is the case for analog modulation but in case of digital if we talk about digital then uh, at this place there would be a stream of uh, digital bits okay and uh, we will have a combination of uh, phase shift keying psk and ask amplitude shift keying of both of these so in digital case qam is a combination of ask and psk okay and at the output these outputs are taken uh, of the these am modulated waves are taken and the output here we get is multiplexed signal so this is known as quadrature amplitude modulation because uh, we phase shift the carrier wave by 90 degrees 
this is the reason okay why it is called as quadrature so in this qam transmitters block diagram you can understand that the output st would be this okay this st would be x1 t a cos omega ct the output of the product modulator first product modulator that it will prod uh, it will provide the product of these two terms this carrier wave and the first modulating signal x1 t and this is the second uh, modulating signal and the carrier wave with a phase shift of 90 degrees that is cos changed to sin okay so x2 t a sin omega ct and uh, as we know that they, they have been added in the output so this is the st uh, if you want to see the diagram uh, let me show it uh, to you again the output of this product modulator is x1 t a cos omega ct multiplication of this and this and output of this one is the multiplication of this and this so it is x2 t a sin omega ct and uh, we have added them so we add these two terms so this is the st combined expression okay so one important thing uh, you should also know that this qam scheme enables two modulated signals to occupy the same transmission channel and allows the separation of these two message signals at the receiver output therefore it is also called as bandwidth conservation scheme because with this, with this scheme what we are doing we are simultaneously transmitting two analog signals two amplitude modulated signals we are providing two message signals to the product modulator and uh, two carrier waves are used at the as a phase shift of at a phase shift of 90 degrees in quadrature so it is uh, providing us a way we are able to send two modulated am modulated waves in case of analog modulation and uh, two ask modulated waves in uh, case of uh, digital modulation with the help of this scheme so this scheme allows us to occupy the same transmission channel and at the receiving end we can uh, detect these message signals easily therefore we call this scheme as bandwidth conservation scheme also so this is very important scheme now let's have a look at the block diagram of a qam receiver this is the qam receivers block diagram and here the multiplexed signal st this was the output of the qam transmitter this is the multiplex signal st that we have seen the equation of st so this has been applied uh, this is the input to this uh, qam receiver the, and this has been applied to this receiver and now again we use two product modulators and 90 degree phase shifter and uh, apply this uh, st signal again to this product modulator to both of these product product modulators and this phase shifter again this uh, this cos omega ct is applied directly to this product modulator while to this product modulator we have first input as this st output of the transmitter multiplex signal and this carrier wave is phase shifted first by 90 degrees and then applied to this and after passing them through the low pass filter we get at the output our modulating signal x1 t at this output and x2 t at its at the output of this low pass filter but important thing here that uh, should be taken care of is that this cos omega ct this uh, carrier wave this oscillator and the oscillator used uh, at the transmitting end okay at this place should be in coherence they should be in same phase okay so this is the condition carrier wave used at the transmitter and at the receiving end they should be in phase okay so in this way we again uh, get the modulating signals back at the receiving end this so i think you understood all the points in the next videos we will see another modulation techniques if you liked my video please uh, click on the like button and uh, if you have not subscribed my channel yet please subscribe my channel engineering made easy and uh, yes don't forget to answer the question that i have asked you uh, in the starting of this video write your uh, answer in the comment section of this video till then bye bye see you soon in the next video thanks for watching friends for more such videos you can uh, subscribe my channel engineering made easy and please don't forget to like and share the video if you liked it for more detailed information you can uh, visit my blog see you soon in the next video till then bye bye friends for more such videos you can uh, subscribe my channel engineering made easy 
and please don't forget to like and share the video if you liked it for more detailed information you can visit my blog see you soon in the next video till then bye bye